All right. Systems of inequalities. We did systems of linear equations, right? Graphically, what did that look like? Well, whenever we did the systems of linear equations, what did that look like? How did we find the solution? We graphed each line, and we found where they intersected, right? This is the same concept, only now we're using inequalities. So, what's the difference in an inequality and an equation? There's no equal sign. There's no equal sign. It's less than, greater than, less than, or equal to, greater than, or equal to. What's the difference graphically? The line is solid or dashed, and somebody else said the shading, okay? This time our solution is going to be the area where the shading overlaps. So we're going to be putting more than one inequality on a graph, shading each one individually in a different color, and looking for the overlap, okay? So it would like the solution on the like the graph with the shading section? Yep. So we call it a solution area. That is the where the shading and this should be really easy for you because we've already taken time doing, um, doing linear inequalities and graphing them. This is just putting more than one now on a graph. So I'm going to set up my graph. You need graph. You need me to go back. Here we go. I think the easiest way to teach this is just to show you because, I mean, we've already graphed inequalities. So a system of inequalities means two or more inequalities. So I'm going to say y is greater than 2x minus 4. And y is less than or equal to, can y'all see that over the grid? I heard one no. Everybody else is yes. Negative 0.5x plus 3. Now these are both in what form? Slope intercepts, so they should be easy peasy graphs for us to do, yes? yes? Okay. So, let's graph the very first one. I'm going to do this one in pink. Down to four, that's exactly right. One, two, three, four, and then what? Up two, over one. I'm going to connect those. Should be should it be blah, 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 a solid or a dashed line? Dashed. Why? That's exactly right. So I'm gonna come in here with my little eraser. It has to think about it a second. Come on. Oh, it's not going to dash that. Okay, I'm going to have to just hand dash it. All right, so now the question is, which way do I need to shade? Y is greater than. Which way? If I'm not sure, what should I do? Plug in a point. Upwards because y is greater than, y is by itself, which way does y get bigger, above that line or below that line? Above. I mean, you don't have to, but... Does it include the line? Are numbers on the line included in the solution area? No, because it's dashed, right? All right, that's line one. This is where you get to practice your artistic skills in here, with your coloring. You need what? All right, how about the second one? That's right. Negative one half. Down one over two. That's exactly right. Negative a half is negative one over two. Solid or dashed? Solid. Solid. Down or up? Hmm. Uh, Wait, what? Well, you go down one, so, yeah. 
Because it's if the slope is negative one half, it's rise over run, so that means go down one, run two. Oh. Let's say I don't know. I just don't know which way to shade. I'm confused. Let's plug in zero, zero. If I plug in zero, zero, I get zero is less than or equal to negative 0.5 times zero plus three. Zero is less than or equal to three. True or false? False. Oh, wait. That's, that's, true. that's true. That's true, right? So this is zero, zero, yes? So that's the side I'm going to shade in. So I'm going to shade down. Okay, so down we go. Does it include the points on the line this time? Yes. yes. And I mean, clearly I'm being exaggerant with my shading. So let me just do that. Mm -hmm. So, if I had another um, inequality, I would graph that also and I would look. So now what I want to see is I have a very, very visible solution area. Do you see it? It's where the pink and the yellow overlap. So I would say, including this line, right? Not including this line, this is my solution area. Okay? Any point in that is a solution. So let's see. Is the point negative 110? a solution to the system of inequalities? No. 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 Why? Negative, negative 110. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's very visibly outside of the solution area, right? How about the point 2, 2? Oh. It falls on the line. Which line does it fall on? It falls on the solid line, which is a solution. So, yes, that is a solution. How about 2, 0? Oh, why? That time the line is dashed, which means it does not include that. Does this make sense, what we're doing? Okay, two zero is here. That's nope. That's on the dashed line. Any point in this area, and it goes on forever, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, Sarah? I told y'all this was easy, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do one more. It it is really easy. It's really really easy. And by the way, as you're graphing, you may have some that there is no overlap, okay? So maybe you graph some, and you end up with something like two parallel lines, one shaded above and one shaded below. There's no solution. They don't share anything, right? Just like parallel lines don't share um, an intersection point. Um, parallel inequality shaded the opposite way. Now, if they were shaded, if this one was shaded down and this one was shaded up, the solution area would be in between the two, right? Okay, here's where we're going to apply. Should we do one more before we do the application problem? No. Let's do one word problem with just straight up graphing the system and then we'll do the triangle problem I want to do. So two more examples, yeah. I, love I do too. Yes, I will. I will. All right, so listen, 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 Linda. Okay. Shouts that y'all haven't seen that clearly, have you? Have y'all seen that? Listen, Linda, listen. Oh, yeah. It's really funny. Okay. Chelsea has final exams in calculus, physics, and history well. She has up to 25 hours to study for the exams. She plans to study history for two hours. Um, she needs to spend at least seven hours studying for calculus because it's the best. 
No, it doesn't say that. I'm just. And I'm just kind of pulling out the information and writing it so we don't have to read through the whole problem again. Um, but over 14, no more than 14. It's too much. She hopes to spend between 8 and 12 hours on physics. <clears throat> Write and graph a system of inequalities to represent the situation. Oh my goodness. Well, the physics and calculus is pretty easy, right? I mean, that's, that's straight up. Um, at least, and in fact, we need to write it in terms of only two variables, right? So let's do, because she says she's going to spend two hours on history. Isn't that what it said? She plans to study history for two hours. So she studies history for two hours. How many hours are left in total? 23. 23. Okay, so now we can just disregard history. That's not going to be part of our... She knows what she's going to spend on history. We want to find how many she spends on physics and calculus. All right, so how can I set this up? I'm going to let calculus be X and physics be Y. If you want to use C and P, you can. I find y'all understand a little better with X and Y. I don't know why. Okay. Um, <laughs> set up an inequality for her spending at least seven hours and no more than 14 hours studying calculus. What does that look like? Okay. I'm going to put the X in the middle. At least seven hours. Do y'all agree with that? How about the physics? Same thing. Okay. So let's think about this for just a minute because we're going to have to graph it. I've really got two different inequalities here, right? that I want the in-between of. I've got x is greater than or equal to 7, and I've got x is less than or equal to 14. It's got to be both of those, right? What kind of line is x equals? Vertical. Vertical. x equals is always vertical. Here, the two inequalities would be y is greater than or equal to 8, and y is less than or equal to 12. Those are horizontal. So think about what this is going to look like on a graph. The first one, in between 7 and 14, is going to be shaded. And the second one, in between 8 and 12, is going to be shaded, right? So I'm in a square right now on my graph. And we'll graph them in just a minute, but I want you to see why. I want you to understand. Between, whenever x is just between two numbers, I'm talking about two vertical lines shaded in between. When I'm talking about between two y values, I'm talking about two horizontal lines shaded in between. Does that make sense to y'all right now? Okay. Um, I have to take into account, though, that she's only got 23 hours to spend, right? So I need x plus y to be what? Less than or equal to 23. She can't go more than 23 hours. That's all she's got, right? So now I have three sets of inequalities that I'm going to graph to find the intersection of. Y'all ready? Then we'll see how many she needs to spend on each one. All right, here we go. This one's, what form is that one in? Standard. How am I going to graph in standard? Cover up. Cover up. Cover up, right? All right, let me get to my grid. Say again. Yes, the X and the Y intercepts are going to be exactly the same. They're going to be at 23. She's going to have a 23 at X and a 23 at Y, and it's going to... Now... Because this is a real life problem where there are no negatives. I can't study negative three hours, right? That's right. Thank you. You can't, I don't know, some people, I see their grades and I go, hmm. You studied negative 1.2 hours last night, didn't you? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, anyway, y'all do not laugh when I'm here. Tough crowd. 
Um, I'm going to stay in quadrant one is the point that I'm getting to. What was X? Was that calculus or physics? So I'm going to put in parentheses here calculus and Y was my physics. And I know I need to go up to 23, right? So maybe I need to go by twos. Two, four, maybe I need to check this. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, two, 24, 26. Just to make sure I get everybody in. Two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. All right, the first one was between seven and 14, right? We said those were what kind of lines? Vertical. Vertical, right. X equals, this is how I remember it. This is gonna be really dumb because I'm the queen of dumb remember tricks. So an X really looks like an arrow pointing down and an arrow pointing up to make the X here. So that's how I remember that it's a vertical line. Or you use a V to write a V upside down and I didn't, that doesn't make sense to me because of the Y, but down and up, see this is X, right? This is an arrow pointing down and an arrow pointing up, so it's a vertical line. Uh, I just think of like a Y, it's like, yeah. do, you, do, you do you do a tell? You do a Y. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so between 7 and 14. Two, four, six, is it solid or dashed? Why? Mm -hmm. It's or equal to. So I'm going to go ahead between seven and 14, 12, 14. And everything in between, right? Right. I love this book because there's so many real life examples in here that we can use. I think so too. I'm so glad y'all think so. All right, and then physics is between 8 and 12. Solid or dashed? Solid, solid, solid. I do. I like that you sing to things because I do that all the time. 8 to 12. I now have two colors. This is looking cool. Does it look cool on y'all's paper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then pink. X plus Y has to be less than or equal to 23, and we already said that if we covered up here, if we cover up the X, we get Y is 23, and if we cover up the Y, we get X is 23. So 23 is both the X intercept and the Y intercept. When we graph in standard form, we do cover up. So X equals 23 and Y equals 23. Those are the X and Y intercepts. So why is that? Why is it what? So watch, I'll show you. Let me just show you. When we put this on the graph, it's cutting off a corner of our box, right? You see that? Because I'm less than, right? So I'm going to shade down here. I love doing these and coloring. I love to color, though. 
We did make a triangle. Wait till you see what we're going to do with the next triangle. <laughs> Y'all be excited. Be very excited. Okay, so my solution area here, which is inclusive, it includes every vertice and every edge because everything is solid. My solution area is this funky little shape. A trapezoid has two parallel sides. I mean, one parallel, one set of parallel. Yeah. All right, questions about that? Well, I have this perfect graph paper up here with these little tools that let me draw perfectly straight lines. That, okay. Makes sense, yeah. So, give me, and let me just make sure you understand, give me one amount of time that she could spend on calculus and on physics. So, one point that would satisfy both of them. 12, 10. 12, 10. Yes. 14, 10. 10, 10. 10, 10. All of those work. Yes, yes. Any point in that region. Good job, y'all. I'm impressed. That's okay. Okay, now let's see how well you understand systems along with this. This is my very last example, I promise. This could be a couple of days. I am going to give you three inequalities. <gasps> Not three, Miss McGee. Yep, three. Come on, Miss McGee, give us four. No, three is enough, y'all. I don't want to throw too much on you. Come on, Miss McGee, we really want four. <gasps> what gave you that idea? How about you? Yes, this is going to be, yeah. Mm -hmm. I am also, since y'all asked so nicely, going to give them to you in, in various forms here. Well, y'all got slope-intercept form, I think. Let's do them in standard. I can't wait until tomorrow whenever I actually have a graph paper. It's going to make this a lot easier. I was going to say, I'm sure if you asked, one of your nice classmates would share. I have three inequalities here. When you get gaff, when you gaff, uh, when you graph these three inequalities, a shape is going to emerge. That shape is going to be a triangle. Not to try. A triangle. I, but I don't want you just to find the solution area of the triangle. Oh, wait for it. I want you to find the vertices of the triangle. The coordinates of the vertices of the triangle. Is it the corner? The, corners? the not three corners. Absolutely. <gasps> what if Why you're not hard? absolutely positively Why sure? Why is that hard? I've got equations, so maybe I will need to find an intersection point of equations, I found which I do by solving systems of equations. Okay, so let's get started and then I'll walk you through it. I am going to be very, very nice to you, though, and allow you to use your calculator to solve the intersection points graphically. Um, yeah. Or you can always do it algebraically, but I'll, I'll help you. But let's go through first. What's wrong? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. We're going to do it together. No, 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 no. We haven't learned it yet. All right, let's look at equation number one. Equation number one I'm going to graph in pink. And again... I am covering up. I am covering up because it is in a standard form. Right? Okay, so what's the x-intercept here? Negative one-half, right? Because if 2x equals negative 1, 
That means x equals negative 1 half. Cover up. If I cover up the y, I get 2x equals negative 1. So x is negative 1 half, right? Okay. Now cover up the x, and I get negative, one, negative y equals negative 1. So y is 1. All right, I have two points. That's all I need for a line, right? Yeah. Let's connect them. Solid or dashed? Solid. Solid. All these are less than or equal to. Solid. All these are or equal to. We didn't do slope intercept form. That's the only way two um, points will connect. Those two points will connect. Up or down? Oh, we got to shade that crap. Uh, oh. <laughs> we got to shade that crap. The shading is so much fun. It's down. It's down. Did you plug zero, zero in in your head? Yeah, zero is greater than or equal to one is true. So I'm shading down. It's very um satisfying. Oh, I can't hit undo because then it'll undo everything because I haven't lifted the pin up. It'll just have to stay a little overline. I failed coloring in kindergarten. Do you have an eraser? Um, yeah. Y'all don't have to color like all of this like I'm doing. Okay. There's my pink. No, no, no. Why's it doing that? You hunk of junk. Okay, we're going to leave it. You can tell it's pink. All right, the second one I'm going to do in yellow. Yeller, yeller, yeller. Old yeller, new yeller, medium yeller. Um, this one is just x plus y. There are no coefficients, so my x and y intercepts are exactly the same. What are they? Four. Four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Solid or dashed? Solid. They're all solid. Up or down? Look what it's doing. Stop. Down. Down, down, baby. Down, down. Clearly. Nobody does, I don't think. Have you? It's going down for real. <laughs> oh. oh, my bad. <laughs> okay, and then last one. I cannot believe I have not looked down at the clock. I've been having so much fun graphing these, and we are almost out of time. Um, I'll do this one in... I don't, why don't I have a blue one here? Or you like a light Oh, I did have a blue one. All right, what's x? What's the x-intercept? Four. Oh, how convenient. It is the same one as that. How about the y-intercept? Oh, how convenient yet again. All right, I'm going to connect. Oh, 
Up or down, up or down, up or down, up this time. Shoot a monkey. I don't know. Somebody, I just. All right, so we can tell. We can tell our triangle, yes? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight it for you. I want to know the coordinates of the vertices. So this, these two are super duper easy, right? Four zero. I should probably use black. I don't even have black. Four zero and zero one. Okay. Easy for those two, right? They happen at the same line. My problem is going to come from this one. Here's what I'm going to have to do to make sure. Which two colored lines are those intersecting right there? Yellow and pink. So the first two equations, yes? I need to graph them and find the point of intersection. Use your calculator. This is where I said I'm going to let you use your calculator. Now, if you do not want to use your calculator and listen very carefully, this is back to the lesson we did before. I have two, and I'm going to do them as lines because that's what I'm looking at. I want the point of intersection of these two lines. You can solve this algebraically or graphically. This is kind of an easy algebraic because if you do elimination and add them as they are right now, you'll get 3x equals 3, x equals 1. Plug that back in to find y, right? If you would rather use your calculator, you are welcome to use your calculator to find the point of intersection. So it might not be exactly on. I don't think that's right. You know what type of bottom going to So if it's 0, 1, 4, 0, 1. It may not be exact. I don't know that it's going to be exact or not. If I plug that in, let's see. Um, one plus, it is. So it's 1, 3. So y'all are right. But I show you that because I was hoping that one wasn't going to be right on. Um, in your homework, there is one triangle one. Yeah. I bet there was a problem. Did you solve the equations for y? Did you get y equals... 2x plus 1, because you have to divide by negative 1. Yes, it should be 1 half. Half, yes. And then the other one should be y equals negative x plus 4. Okay. Um, on your homework, there is one that comes up that does not have even nice whole number. You can't tell on the, the third vertex.